What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another weekly update. So it's another long one this week, lots of exciting stories to go over here. And the first one is some pretty big news if it turns out to be true. So there's this very bold report put out this week by Autoline Daily, which is like an industry news uh, publication. And so they're talking about the future of the Mustang. And they claim that the next generation version of the Mustang, one, won't be coming until 2028. And then two, whenever it does finally arrive, they say it's gonna be all electric exclusively. There will be no gas version of the Mustang. So first, the consensus that all the other reports and rumors and stuff we've heard so far have suggested that there will be a S650 version of the Mustang coming next year or sometime as a 2023 model year vehicle. So that has been the consensus. And um, so this report kind of contradicts that a little bit. Um, but with that being said, you know, there's been talks that this S650 will just be a heavily reworked version of the current generation Mustang. So it technically won't be an all new vehicle from the ground up potentially. And so maybe that's what Autoline is getting at with them saying that an all new version won't be coming until 2028. So that is totally possible, um, but still, I mean, you know, even if we have seven more years until it goes all fully electric, that still seems like a stretch. I could certainly see them offering an electric version of the Mustang alongside a gas version, but I know that even many people within Ford are very protective of the V8 powered Mustang. And, you know, in the past they said, don't worry, it's not going anywhere. And even with the Mach-E coming out, they're like, don't worry, we're not replacing the V8 powered Mustangs or anything. So they keep calming our fears. I mean, obviously seven years is a long way to go. We'll see how things change in the next seven years, but I don't know. I don't know if they're actually going to do this. Um, maybe they're talking about it, we'll have to see. I mean, like I mentioned though, a while back, you know, there's been multiple times where I feel like GM has been low key teasing an electric Camaro by showing a Camaro silhouette over top of that electric platform that they keep showing off. And so, Maybe Ford wants to beat them to the punch, but I still don't see why you have to do it exclusively electric. I get that there's different platforms and stuff, but I feel like there's got to be some way to have a body um, that kind of fits both platforms. You know, have something that will fit over an S650 platform or something and something that will also fit over top of a Mach-E electric skateboard or something. I don't know. May I'm not an engineer, so maybe that's totally impossible, but I just feel like only doing one or only doing the other is just going to be kind of foolish for a while until you know you kind of figure out what people are actually wanting to buy and you know how things are actually going anyway i'm not going to go on that too long because again that's very far off if it even is true so we'll have to wait and see how all that plans out but in other ford performance news um the order guide has leaked for the raptor for the f-150 and it leaked onto the f-150 gen14.com forums and so it confirms that the uh, Raptor will be getting um, the 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6 for the regular version. Um, so that has been confirmed, you know, so that means you don't have to spend T-Rex type money to get a Raptor with this new generation version. You know, there has been the V8 powered Raptor that was spy running around. And, um, you know, as far as where that fits in, I'm not sure. Car and Driver referred to it as a Raptor R. There's been other reports that it'll be a limited production type thing. We'll have to see on all that for the V8. Unfortunately, this order guide did not reveal any details whatsoever about even the existence of a V8 version, so we'll have to continue to wait on all that. But at least, you know, we know that there will be the same kind of engine here for the Raptor as there has been with this previous generation. So interesting to hear that. The last little bit of Ford news here, it comes from Automotive News and Auto Forecast Solutions. So they claim that an electric Lincoln Corsair will be arriving in 2026, and it's currently using the name Corsair E uh, internally. So um, they say it'll be on a different platform than the regular Corsair, it's pretty obvious. Um, and they also say they're not even sure if a gas-powered version of the Corsair will continue, um, which certainly you know makes sense. I was assuming that the Mach-E platform was going to be moved over to Lincoln at some point for something. I don't know if that's what this vehicle is or if Lincoln's doing something else with it, but um, you know, honestly, I'm surprised that you know an all-electric Lincoln is even that far off. I was assuming it would be coming a lot sooner than that, but we'll have to wait and see. But interesting to hear that nonetheless. There's another report here by Bloomberg this week that claims that Chevy is working on several Corvette-branded concept vehicles that will likely lead to an electric vehicle with a profile similar to the Mustang Mach-E. And so internally, it's called Project R at Chevrolet. And according to the anonymous people familiar with the matter, um, Chevy has been testing, has been you know um, testing out you know what they want to do as far as various different concepts and stuff. Um, so 
I guess they're still trying to come to a consensus as far as exactly what they want to do going forward or if they want to do anything at all. Um, and we know that Chevy has been spied testing regular versions of the Corvette that have some type of hybrid powertrain because they have an electrified like warning label on the outside of them. And we also do know that Chevy has trademarked the E-Ray name. So we had assumed that would be for some type of hybrid version of the Corvette, but especially with Mach-E now, um, you know, if they end up wanting to do an electric Corvette uh, SUV type thing or something, I think E-Ray would kind of make sense. It also plays on the Corvette name, but hopefully it wouldn't actually be called Corvette E-Ray. Although, you know, Ford has set the trail here with the Mustang Mach-E, so I'm sure Chevy will do the same thing. I mean, Chevy already used the Blazer name on just a normal, you know, crossover. So um, I would not be shocked, although I'm sure there'll be a lot of people upset about this like there are in the Mustang community. But um, yeah, and so other stuff here is that um, some people suggested that the vehicle that's in the shadows of the CES tees that we saw just recently, um, that one model looks like it has Corvette-like headlights, and some people are suggesting um, that that could be that Corvette crossover thing, um, and so we'll have to wait and see if that turns out to be it or not. Uh, but it sounds like if they're currently working on multiple concepts, then to tease one final thing off in the corner there seems a little premature, so we'll have to wait and see on all that. But um, another little official thing from GM here is that they have officially teased the back end of the new Bolt EUV, um, which will be revealed alongside the regular refresh Bolt on February 14th. So we'll wait to see that. Um, other electrified stuff, the chairman of the board at BMW's M division this past week has confirmed that an electric M model is coming this year as well. And so it won't be a full on M most likely. Um, what, what it will you know, most likely end up being is an M version or an M trim line of the i4 that's coming, which is their electric sedan. And um, the M version they're saying here could be, uh, end up doing over 500 horsepower still. So, you know, it would be plenty fast and worthy of an M badge. Even if it is silent, you know, that'll be kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, so lots of electrified stuff coming this year and performance electrified stuff as well. But back to some gas news here for a few minutes. Um, last year, Toyota started teasing their GR hot hatch that they're planning on debuting. And um, so it was going to be an answer to the GR Yaris that we're not getting here in the States. Um, and so the past rumors have suggested that that GR Corolla, which is we most likely know it's gonna be a you know, version of the Corolla, um, that that would either get all the GR Yaris stuff or it could do some type of new electrified powertrain, you know, something like a RAV4 Prime setup or something maybe um, in the Corolla to do a futuristic performance model. But it sounds like they're not going to be that daring just yet. So there's a new report this week by Autocar that claims that um, their, auto their anonymous sources have confirmed it won't be electrified at all and will be powered by the same 1.6 liter three-cylinder turbo engine you get in the GR Yaris that does 261 horsepower. They're saying that's what you'll be getting here in this GR Corolla. The only part they're not sure about is the um, you know, drivetrain as far as whether it's going to be front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. And honestly, I would like to see them do both. I think there's room for both. I think there's a lot of people that would love an all-wheel drive version to compete with the WRX and stuff like that, but then I think people would also really love a front-wheel drive version to compete with the GTI and stuff. So I say give the customer the choice. Give us both of them. I mean, if it's going to be the same all-wheel drive system as the GR Yaris, you kind of already did most of the development work already with that. Just, you know, try and fit it into the Corolla there um, and then, you know, just have a version that just drops that and runs it through the front wheels and see which one sells better. I think it'd be great to offer both, but we'll wait and see what they end up doing with that. And some other uh, Toyota performance news here. Car Advice in Australia is reporting that Toyota has filed a new trademark just last week here in the United States, actually, for the Celica name again. So um, I'm sure there'll be a lot of clickbait stories about this elsewhere, but um, yeah, there's been rumors in the past that the Celica and even the MR2 could eventually come back. And we do know Toyota loves making sports cars and their CEO is very much an enthusiast and an awesome guy. So, you know, that certainly is in the realm of possibilities, um, but it's also a safer bet to just assume that this new Celica trademark is most likely just to preserve the Celica name so they can continue to use it in the future or to use it for t-shirts or whatever they want to use it for. Um, so I, I mean, even though they did say the trademark is, does apply to automotive vehicles and you know things like that, um, I still think that it's going to basically just be for you know, memorabilia and stuff like that. Because one interesting thing that um, Car Advice does point out is that, you know, with all the new Toyota performance models, they have the GR in front of them. And so if they were gonna actually do a new model that was somewhat performance oriented, 
you know, it would be assumed they would be calling it the GR uh, Celica or something like that instead of just Celica. So unless they plan on using it for a crossover or something like that. Uh, but otherwise, you know, it sounds like, um, you know, it's not going to be something that's going to actually be on a new car. But we'll have to wait and see on all that. Um, and Car Advice had another Toyota discovery this week. They discovered the patent images that Toyota filed for the new GR86 bumper for the front bumper there. So uh, not only do they show you um, how the design is going to change here for the Toyota version compared to the new BRZ, they also show a cut for a GR badge in the upper right corner of the grill there, which basically confirms this new name of GR86 that we've been hearing instead of GT86. Um, and so otherwise, the rest of the styling should be basically the same as the BRZ. Of course, the interior is going to get slight little tweaks, you know, with different steering wheel, different gauge fonts, and, you know, different infotainment, um, you know, software and stuff. But that's about it. I mean, I'm just hoping we see the GR86 here relatively soon since the B BRZ is supposed to be going on sale here this fall. So hopefully, you know, we get some details here on Toyota's version relatively soon. And Cadillac this week has continued to tease the Blackwing models here um, that they'll be revealing on February 1st. And so um, the new thing this week is that each of these vehicles will be getting, uh, you can get a steering wheel that's standard on the CT5 V Blackwing, but it'll be optional on the CT4 Blackwing. But it's, on the steering wheel, it'll actually have etched in the uh, five digits of its VIN um, that'll be etched in there in the bottom. And so they also added along with that that they'll be available to reserve at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time on Cadillac site on February 1st. And uh, you'll want to be ready to pounce whenever um, that site goes live because reservations are limited to just 250 models of each car. Now, thankfully, that's not all they're making. So um, the CT5 V Blackwing and CT4 Blackwing, um, there'll be 250 of each, so that's 500 there. But um, not to worry because they say that um, if you actually miss out on the reservation process, then you can be put on a wait list to be contacted by your dealer uh, when more vehicles become available. So there will be more than just the 250 because at first I saw the 250 headline. I was like, oh man, Cadillac's going to make me mad if they're only making 250 of each of these. But thankfully, it sounds like they're doing more. They also mentioned when they're talking about the VIN sequencing for these models that they'll be sequenced by year, model, and transmission. So the year part makes me hopeful. This isn't just a one-year thing and they're only doing 250 and then that's it, that they will hopefully continue to build these over several years. Um, and I think there's been rumors that the CT4 and CT5 will go away in 2025 maybe. So we got at least a few more years here. Um, so we'll see on all that. Um, and so that gives me a little bit of hope. Now, as far as you know, how many they actually build per year, we don't know. They continue to say they'll be only available in limited quantities. They're gonna be starting to arrive late this summer. Um, you know, so I don't know how many more beyond the 250. I certainly hope that they just build as many as they can build. Even if it is limited quantities, I hope they're just, you know, still willing to take as many orders as possible, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Um, and we also are gonna have to wait and see what the pricing is for these, because if they're gonna be limited, then they are going to be expensive. Um, but I mean, to have, you know, a luxury sedan these days in 2021 with a manual transmission, which they've confirmed they're gonna offer, and having the engines those will might most likely have with the, you know, supercharged V8 and the, um, you know, turbo V6, I think that they'll be very special models, uh, especially with the manual. So um, yeah, good luck to those of you who are getting ready to pre-order one of those. <laughs> here on February 1st. Uh, it'll be crazy. Um, other uh, GM news here. Buick officially this week has revealed two pictures of the 2022 Buick Enclave. So this is a refreshed version, um, but it is fairly decent changes, especially up front there. You can see um, they've followed the trend here of moving the headlights to lower in the uh, front bumper there, and they put the LED DRLs up in the usual headlight position, and so it gives a little more of a futuristic look. The grille is also larger, and the bumper is sportier now too. The back end tweaks are a little more subtle with just basically new taillights being the biggest change and the slight tweaks to the bumper and stuff as well. We don't have any other details on these yet, but uh, we should be getting more details relatively soon. Other news here, Honda has also teased the next generation version of the HRV, but um, they've revealed this teaser for Europe and um, it sounds like it's going to be completely different from our version in the States because uh, Honda actually confirmed to Autoblog um, that uh, we won't be getting this HRV in the US. Instead, we'll be getting a different version designed to meet the uh, distinct needs of American customers and they say it's currently under development. So um, the sport back shape you see there in the back, that might um, not transfer over to our version. Uh, we'll have to wait and see on that, but it probably would be a little more rugged and sporty and you know, it might be a completely different vehicle too. We'll have to wait and see, um, but uh, that's kind of interesting. And hopefully we still do see a new HRV relatively soon because 
Uh, the version we get here in the States is pretty dated at this point and uh, is well due for a new version. So we'll have to wait and see on all that. Back to some electric stuff here though. There's two electric vehicles that were officially revealed this week. First is the 2022 Mercedes-Benz EQA 250. So this is based on the GLA, but it's fully electric and it does have some significant styling changes to really differentiate it from the GLA though with these uniquely shaped headlights, a blocked off grille and front bumper, along with unique hatch out back that has these full width LED taillights. The wheels are also unique and uh, optionally you can get them with this rose gold theme that the EQ models have been establishing but you can't get them without the rose gold thing if that's not your thing. Um, that theme though will continue on the inside if you want it to, to kind of uh, spruce up the interior and the hardware that it shares with the regular GLA version. But again, you can also get that with blue accents instead if you don't like the uh, rose gold thing there. And at launch, uh, the EQA is gonna only be available here with uh, one setup. It's gonna be uh, one electric motor at the front for front wheel drive, along with 188 horsepower and 277 pound feet of torque. And uh, only one battery to choose from at launch as well. It's a 66.5, kilowatt hour uh, battery as far as the usable amount of uh, charge you get out of it and it gets a range of uh, 264 miles on the WLTP cycle which is more generous so count on something in the lower 200s if it does get brought here to the states eventually there will be a long range version with 310 miles of range and an all-wheel drive version with 268 horsepower as well and so these are going to be arriving in europe this year but like most european electric vehicles uh, europe is going to be the priority for these and mercedes only says they're considering it for the us and nothing more so we'll have to wait and see on all of that. And while we're talking about these electric Mercedes, um, the company also revealed a few teaser images here of their upcoming models um, in the EQ lineup and when they'll be arriving. And so they confirmed the EQS will be the first electric Mercedes we actually get here in the States. They've reiterated that they are not bringing the EQC here to the States at all. Um, and so, EQS is the first that will be revealed this spring and will go on sale this summer in Europe. Next up is the uh, GLB, uh, at least on the European timeline here. That's going to be getting uh, an electric EQB version um, that's going to be starting production this year. And that'll likely have similar changes to the EQA here. Uh, and then in the second half of this year, the EQE sedan will arrive, followed by an EQS SUV and an EQE SUV. I hope they do some type of new name for those so it's not just like, here's the SUV version, here's the sedan version. That'd get a little confusing when you're trying to refer to one or the other. Um, but anyway, they'll be starting production, those SUVs in Alabama in 2022. And then going along with that info, Mercedes dealers actually got an update as well about the EQ rollout that I was able to obtain thanks to an anonymous source that sent it in to me. And so they clarified the timeline here on some of the products for the US. So the EQS here, the sedan version, uh, will actually uh, not be going on sale in the US until this fall. So Europe gets it this summer, we get it in the fall. And uh, the EQE sedan will be going on sale here um, Sometime in 2022, they're saying. So, in, you know, like I said, late 2021 for Europe, 2022 here in the States for us. And it will be on the same platform as the EQS, which is the first time I think I've heard that. Um, so that's, you know, a little bit of extra insight there that whatever we see on the EQS as far as platforms and stuff, most likely the EQE will get very similar stuff. Um, so that's interesting. They also added that in addition to the EQA still being considered for the US, they also say that other entry level models are also only under consideration for now. So that probably includes that EQB, considering that's the same setup as the EQA. So I'm guessing both of them, they're a little up in the air about here for the States. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's about it as far as all the Mercedes timeline, but it's really nice of them to kind of lay it all out for us. Be like, here's when everything's coming. Here's what we're planning on doing. No big secrets or anything. It's just, here's what we're doing. It's kind of refreshing. And so nice of them to reveal all that to us. And the other electric vehicle that was revealed this week uh, officially was the uh, base version of the Porsche Taycan. So it's the only rear wheel drive version of the Taycan and uh, it's gonna be ditching the front motor to help drop the price down. And of course, you know, it's typical, you know, that you get rear wheel drive versions with the non 4S versions of other models. And so the base Taycan though, it's a, gonna be a big savings. It's almost 25 grand cheaper than the 4S version with a starting price now of just $81,250 before the tax incentives. 
So with that tax incentive factored in, you're just in the low 70s, you know, low to mid 70s for a base Taycan, which is a lot more reasonable than the six figures that all the other ones go for. And aside from losing that front motor, mechanically it's the same elsewhere with the same rear engine, two-speed transmission, battery choices, all that is the same. Um, even the brakes are the same size as the 4S, so that's nice. The base battery is a 79.2 kilowatt hours with a 93.4 kilowatt hour battery being optional. And with that smaller battery, the base Taycan is about 200 pounds lighter than the 4S version. So it's a nice little savings there. It should help with handling and stuff possibly. And with a smaller battery, horsepower is 402, along with only 254 pound-feet of torque. Seems kind of low. Um, then the bigger battery bumps up power to 469 horsepower, but just only 263 pound-feet of torque. Either way though, they should uh, be pretty quick. They're doing zero to 60 times of 5.1 seconds for both of them. And range hasn't been given yet by the EPA for these new models, but they should be much higher than the 4S version, which was rated at 203 miles officially. And that has even been shown to be conservative with everyone's independent testing of those. So I'm guessing somewhere in the mid to high 200s would be realistic for that. We'll have to wait and see though. Uh, but anyway, they're on sale now and available to order immediately if you want one. So cool to see that. Autocar this week also has uh, a new report that they have uh, learned the existence of a battery-powered Phantom prototype that Rolls-Royce is testing and that the company plans to reveal their official plans before the end of 2021 for their electric model that they're working on. So Autocar believes the electric rolls uh, will be an entirely new model line for them and that it potentially could be called the Silent Shadow since the name was trademarked last year by BMW. And so that, you know, pays homage to the Silver Shadow and other models that they've done in the past. A very historical roles kind of name. And I think Silent Shadow would be perfect. That's pretty cool. Um, and anyway, they claim it's going to be uh, using the same kind of powertrain in some form as what you're going to be getting in the BMW iX that's coming next year. That's going to be, I think, about 500 horsepower or so. I'm assuming that Rolls would want a little bit more power, especially since their vehicle is going to be a lot heavier, most likely. We'll have to wait and see on all that. But um, yeah, I think, you know, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, Bentley's talked about this as well, that, you know, doing an electric model is like music to their ears, even though it's really expensive, because it gets rid of the one thing that uh, takes away from the refinement of these ultra hyper luxury vehicles is the engine sound. And they try and muffle that as much as possible. And they're pretty successful at doing that. But, you know, having it still be completely electric, you know, just you can't beat that amount of silence. And so... I think, uh, you know, that'll be embraced at some point eventually here because, I mean, in reality, most people don't actually drive the Rolls Royce very long or very far. So uh, you don't really need a gas version most of the time, I think, anyway. But interesting to hear that. Kia this week has also uh, teased uh, their upcoming electric vehicles with seven of them arriving by 2027, which is what they've previously promised. And so the first one will be coming in a few months, actually, and will be likely their version of Hyundai's Ionic 5 uh, that they're working on. And is likely uh, the vehicle in the shadows there that's described as a powerful and dynamic crossover, according to the Kia um, little t titles that they had for each of these pictures. So Kia's electric lineup will also have names from EV1 to EV9. That's their naming plan, which I'm like, come on. I'm so, like all these electric vehicles, it's going to be like talking about printers or something with, you know, in the next few years here. Everything's using some type of alphabet soup name of letters and numbers jumbled up. And, you know, this is even less creative than that. It's just like electric vehicle one, electric vehicle two. Like, oh, man, I don't know. I just someone needs to get a little creative with the naming of these things. I think the Mach-E, even though it like, you know, just like it's super annoying that it has the Mustang name. At least they gave it a real name and they didn't just call it you know, EV95 or something. Like, I just, you know, it's, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I just wish they would do some more interesting names for these. But um, the other models that they teased here for the Kias are a fun and practical commuter, strong and bold SUV, agile and dynamic machine, and long and elegant sedan. They also teased their commercial autonomous pods that I guess they're actually trying to put into production here at some point in the next several years. So we'll have to see about all those, but at least as far as the actual driven electric vehicles, I think that all is pretty awesome. And you know, from what we can see in the shadows there, they all look like they're gonna be pretty cool looking vehicles as well. So cool to see that. 
And the last news story this week is that uh, Volkswagen has officially ended production of the regular Golf here for the United States last week. And so the Mark 8 Golf is already in production and being sold in Europe. Um, but Volkswagen already announced, you know, back I think at least a year ago that um, they're only bringing the GTI and Golf R versions of the Mark 8 here to the United States. Those are versions are going to be arriving for the 2022 model year. Uh, but it sounds like it won't be on sale till like the fall. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know why it's taking so long since those have also been on sale for a while now in the in Europe. Um, but if you do want one of the last regular Golfs here in the in the States, Volkswagen said they've built enough to have inventory through the rest of 2021. So I'm guessing it's not a hot seller. So they just built a bunch of them and they'll just sit on lots for the rest of the year. Um, but it's just sad because the Golf has been on sale in the United States since 1974. You know, it's just a really legendary model and um, was a huge hit for a long time and it's kind of a bummer that just you know consumer preferences have changed and people just want SUVs instead of hatchbacks here in the states and so the Golf just doesn't have much room unless you're an enthusiast like I said they're bringing the GTI and I'm very thankful they're bringing that in the Golf R but uh, still sad to see you can't just get a regular Golf anymore after this year but it is what it is, and it's all goes back to if people don't buy them, they quit building them. It, that works for anything. doesn't matter what it is. doesn't matter how historic it is. You know, it all comes down to sales at the end of the day. But, yes, that's it for all the news this week, guys. Let me know your thoughts and everything in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you continue to stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.